Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at the Ranch here, Smoke Meal Lucky Strike, sorting out the world's problems. One slow inhale to a time. Camel, rather. Uh, still early. I just pounded some energy drinks, and uh, I have to finish my rant from earlier because it cut off right about the part I was talking about. Hitler's Wunderwaffen. The V3, the Vengeance 3 program. Now, what was that? Well... At the end of World War II, uh, there was this nasty thing invented called the V-2. It was the world's first ICBM. It was used more or less as a terror weapon to demoralize a, a broken populace. And you know, unfortunately, it had great effect. Now, the V-1 was kind of a, a radio-guided airplane type of drone deal. Now, why does this matter? Well, because of the end of the Second World War, and the potential of nuclear annihilation, right, and the proliferation of said fissile materials, we have this thing called Operation Paperclip, which is basically where, okay, we know you're in the SS, we, we know you did bad things, uh, how would you like to do those to communists? The alternative is uh, you can go for sentencing in Nuremberg, and, well, a lot of these dudes like Werner von Braun made it here. In fact, Werner got us to the moon. <sighs> but in continuing with my very long-winded rant about why I don't believe nukes will ever be used on any full-scale measure, you know, during the space race and all of that, it was just one giant big prick-waving contest between America and the Soviet Union at the time, you know, Sputnik and then our satellites and then their satellites and then their rockets to outer space, then our rockets to outer space, then their rocket to the moon, then our rocket to the moon. I mean, fucking, the list goes on, right? <clears throat> so why does all this matter? The space race was a testing ground for weapons technology. And, and rest assured, while it's probably illegal, they still have nuclear weapons in outer space. They still have strike capabilities, and that's every country that was involved during the Cold War. That's my theory. They'll tell you they don't, but, you know, as we all know, they're full of shit. So, you get to the present-day conflict, right? And we, we've covered in the last episode about, you know, former Soviet scientists' uh, paychecks getting held, and so they decided to steal shit and sell it, which happened to be radioactive materials. And it made it all over the world. It was a big deal. So you get to this little war in Crimea and war in the Balkan states and the war in Ukraine and Russia, right? Kicked off in the late 90s to early 2000s, depending on which part you're talking about. You know, there's been this liberal kind of totalitarian new world order kind of thing that's pushing towards nuclear disarmament, right? And we've had incentive programs. Okay, you destroy X amount of these nukes, we destroy X amount of these nukes, we use the, the fuel for nuclear power, you use the fuel for nuclear power, and then things started heating up again, right? People in Ukraine and the Balkans and Chechnya and everybody else, you know, they have their little wars, their little continuation wars. And, uh, and the question's been brought up. Since nuclear weapons technology has advanced to the point that you can fire an actual atomic shell from a field gun in the fight, you know, could they make a boo-boo and send the wrong shells to Ivan or to, you know, Ivan's gay brother, the Ukrainian, right? The answer is it's possible, but there would have to be so many fuck-ups that lined up consecutively during their bad decision portion of the evening time. And then on top of that, they would have to have some kind of authorization code, know how to make the shell actually arm itself. <clears throat> and once they did that, the other side would retaliate immediately and swiftly, and they would in turn start in again. Now, why I don't believe they'll use nuclear anything other than nuclear power 
is because there's no money in it. What do they gain? They don't really want Ukraine. What they want is Ukraine's power and influence. They want their resources. They want their money, right? You don't get ahead with a hot war. You get ahead with a cold war that has little skirmishes and military policing actions all over, right? You get ahead because of the arms trade, right? What's Uncle Sam doing right now? We are sending all our old shit from the 30 years we did in the sandbox over there as military aid that they're paying 10 times the going rate for. Which I will point out, we don't actually have access to those weapons, right? They, they can surplus a whole bunch of Beretta pistols and things like that, but no, they're not going to do that for us, no. Now, where the real danger is, since we know that nuclear war, at least in my theory, is off the table, and aside from a couple of fuck-ups or accidents, you know, that could potentially occur, it's pretty low risk. Where the real danger is, is where these weapons proliferate after the conflict, right? Ukraine, Russia, that's going to end. Russia's probably going to get what they want. Now, sad facts of life, you know, I, I don't side with one side or the other. I do believe Russia's probably got more of a legitimate argument and complaint than the United States and Ukraine does. Is all of these weapons, like anti-tank weapons, explosives, RPGs, uh, you know, light and heavy machine guns of all sort, cannons... Small arms of all variety, flavor, and shape. You know, NATO v. Warsaw, right? They're going to make their way off the battlefield when people are broke and need money. And eventually they're going to fall in terrorist hands, people that wish to do us harm. And you're going to see in the next 20 or 30 years after this conflict, a lot of these Uncle Sam-made weapons turning up places they should not be. That's where the real danger in all of this shit is. But this has been a long-winded rant about why I think that we are currently involved in Cold War Number 2, and I don't believe nuclear weapons are going to be used. And, of course, you might correct me in the comments. You might have a better point than I do. Fucking sound off. And as always, uh, as my phone clogs up with memory, my cigarette burns my fingers, I need to shower and shave and figure out some fucking breakfast and go take care of my crabby-ass senior... Uh, leave you with wonderful parting words of have a great day, God bless, and take care, and until we meet again, eat my goddamn shorts.